So that particular one cell is going to start dividing and growing because it's the only one that's going to be able to survive. And it's going to take over, everything else will die. So the fungus, the fungi, they are able to release thousands and thousands, millions of spores. And these spores can be taken up by the wind and moved to very far away places. So the fungus is able to colonize totally different areas. For bacteria, the spores are a ways to protect it against extreme conditions. So certain bacteria, not all, what they do is when they get some extreme conditions like extreme heat, they form this kind of like spore which protects their DNA against the, this harsh environment. And they stay like sleeping for sometimes decades or hundreds or thousands of years till ideal conditions occur and then they just start dividing. In both ways, you know, it's a way to propagate and survive. I think that is one of the worries about climate change. We're seeing these new organisms because we might not have seen them. And currently there are no reasons for fungi to evolve to be able to withstand higher temperatures. But what if that were to change? What if, for instance, the world were to get slightly warmer? Or things that have been there that have not really been active, but because now they're in, in an environment that is much more beneficial, they'll start dividing and growing. You know, the fungi are everywhere. There are millions of fungi in the environment, but there are only about a hundred that infect us. You have uh, skin infections, so they land on your skin and they find a really nice moist area to divide and reproduce. And for the infections that affect your lungs or get into your body, you breathe in, and so they uh, go into your respiratory tract. And there are no treatments for this, no preventatives, no cures. They don't exist. It's not even possible to make them. For fungi, they're called antifungal agents, so antibiotics that kill specifically fungi. And there aren't very many of those because the fungi, the cells are very similar to ours. So if you were trying to kill that cell, you're going to affect your own cell. You have a population of fungi. There might be one in that population that is naturally resistant to the antifungal agent. Then that fungus is unable to be controlled by the immune system and it enters your bloodstream or it enters deeper into tissues and divides and reproduces. For you, the infection, how it appears to you, whether it be a fungus, a bacterium, or a virus is the same. So the signs and symptoms that, you're, uh, that you see are almost identical, depending on the infection. The fungal cells, when they get into your body, also grow and divide and cause damage. And underneath it all is how you react to them. So your immune system is trying to kill all these things that are trying to kill you or are trying to use you as a food.